Hello and welcome to Bolt Action Reloading. If you're interested to see how the 110 grain Sierra Match King performs with Alliant Reloader 16 and my 6mm Creedmoor Ruger Precision Rifle, stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest community here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you get notified when I post new videos and you won't miss anything. In today's video we're going to continue our work on the 6mm Creedmoor Ruger Precision Rifle. If you're interested, this is a series. I'll put a card up and you can check out my playlist that has all of the reloads that I've tested in my 6mm Creedmoor Ruger Precision Rifle. In today's video, obviously we're focusing on the 110 grain Sierra Match King Hollow Point Botel Projectile. Our test platform for today is the Ruger Precision Rifle Generation 2 Chamberlain 6mm Creedmoor. If you'd like to know any more details, I should have them posted in the description box below. Today's projectile should be pushing the limits of our twist rate in our rifle at least ever so slightly. Sierra actually claims a 1 in 7 inch twist is needed for this. Like I've mentioned previously, this is a 1 in 7.7 .7 inch twist barrel, so it doesn't quite meet that. However, we're hoping to test it anyway and see if our loads will still stabilize in our rifle. For load data today, we're going straight to Sierra's website and downloading their 6mm Creedmoor load data. We've had really good luck with the Reloader 16 in the past, and since it's second only in velocity to Superformance, this is the powder we're going to be testing today. The cartridge overall length that actually Sierra states is 2.875 inches, but since our distance to land is 2.885 inches with this particular projectile, we're going to back it off to 2.870 inches, since one of the magazines I have can actually load to 2.880 inches, hoping backing off to 2.870 is going to make sure this rifle feeds reliably. We'll get straight into our load data. Our projectile for today is the 100 grain Sierra Match King Hollow Point Boattail, part number 1575. Our primer for today is the CCI 41 Small Rifle Military Primer. I've had really good luck with this in the past. If you want, I'll put a card up and you can check out my primer video where I did some testing in 6.5 Creedmoor. I'm hoping that performance for this primer is going to translate over into this series as well, but we still might do some primer testing if we feel it's needed. Our brass ray is Lapo Brass. Properly head stamped in 6mm Creedmoor. This is actually its first firing and all the firings today were actually fire forming the loads as we were shooting them. Like I mentioned previously, the cartridge overall length we loaded to was 2.870 inches, which is about 15 thousandths give or take off my lands. In case you guys were wondering, if you check out Sierra's website, they do claim the G1 ballistic coefficient of this is 0.617 when loaded speeds over 2600 feet per second, which we're certainly aiming for today. If you guys saw my reloading equipment overview for this particular caliber, you know that I actually have some 115 DTACs that have a slightly higher ballistic coefficient than this. But if those don't work, certainly this 110 green sear match king, if it will stabilize, is not too shabby, at least as far as ballistic coefficient is concerned. Our power for today is Alliance Reloader 16, loaded from 40.4 grains all the way to 41.6 grains. So getting right into our load test, starting at 40.4 grains, our estimate of loss was 29.75 feet per second. We actually achieved 29.55, standard deviation of 7.7, .7, extreme spread of 20, and to start off with a 0.876 MOA group. Moving on up to 40.7 grains, our estimate of loss was around 29.94, actually achieved loss was 29.74. Standard deviation of 7.6, extreme spread of 18, and a 0.578 MOA group. Moving up to 41 grains, our estimate of velocity bumped up to 3,012 feet per second. Actual achieved velocity bumped up a little higher to 3,004 feet per second. Standard deviation of 5.9, extreme spread of 15, a 4-shot group of 0.233 MOA, and a wonderful 5-shot group of less than half an MOA at 4.62. Moving on up to 41.3 grains, 3031 would have been our estimate. Our actual achieved velocity was 3,030 feet per second. Standard deviation of 4.4, extreme spread of 11, but our group opened up slightly to 0.824 MOA. At 41.6 grains, our estimate of velocity was 3050. Our actual achieved velocity was very close at 3054 feet per second. Standard deviation of 5.2, extreme spread of 13, and a 0 0.710 MOA group. Well, if you've been watching the channel, I'm going to put another load analysis model shot on the screen. This is the load analysis worksheet from the 6.5 guys. If you have any interest, I'll put a link in the description box below to their video explaining it. But I do like this because it's a nice visual representation of the load test after it's completed. Most I tend to like this spreadsheet just to see if there's actually one flyer in the group and to see how the rest of them perform. And today's test, honestly, will be no different. 
Even with a still reasonable 5.9 standard deviation with extreme shorter of only 15, you'll see that all those are really tightly bunched up with only one shot slightly higher than the rest, but with extreme spread of only 15, you really can't complain too hard. The group sizes that we saw with that group were really nice. Anytime when I'm actually shooting under half a MOA, I'm typically a very happy person. So to see that right out of the gate with our load test, certainly not going to find any complaints from me. If you were looking only at statistics, you'd certainly be picking that 41.3 grain load, standard deviation of 4.4, extreme spread of only 11. That group size opening up 0.824 MOA, I guess you'd have to leave it, leave it to your best judgment. Anyway, the data's on the screen. You guys can look at that to your heart's content if you pause the video. Obviously, with the results like these, we'll certainly be using some more Reloader 16 in the not too distant future. See if we can tune this load even more. I will put a quick shot of the brass on the screen and you'll be able to see again one of my favorite features for Loader 16. It seems even at max velocity we really don't have any pressure signs here. Even all the way at that max charge of 41.6 grains. No ejector marks at all. Certainly no primer cratering visible whatsoever. Judge these in any way you guys see fit. However, I see no pressure signs that make me worried at all that we're anywhere close to the pressure limit for this cartridge. And should we have better groups at that higher load, I certainly would have no trouble looking a little further in that area, and we still might. If you guys would like to see the groups as they're shot, I'll actually put those at the end of the video. So if you're interested, make sure you stick around for that. But even if you guys aren't going to load the 110 greens here, Match King, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, please post those in the comment section below. If you like the content we do here on the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified when I post next week's video. And until then, stay safe in small groups.